One of the uses for the uh, noise bridge is to measure the attenuation of cable. Here I've got a, a roll of uh, RG213, it's approximately 35 metres long. I want to know what the attenuation of this cable is, say 28 megahertz, where I want to use it. I have it hooked up to, a, to the RX bridge on the Z unknown connector down here. There it is. One of the spreadsheets included with the software pack that you received with the RX run bridge contains a spreadsheet which enables you to find the cable attenuation. That's this one here. So if we go to that one, and we need to input, for example, the frequency at which we want to measure the cable attenuation at. We need to know some information about the cable, for example, how long it is and what its characteristic impedance is. Another one of the spreadsheets enables you to find out its electrical cable length from its physical length. We know the length of the cable because we've measured it, so we will do it that way. So we enter 28 megahertz up here in the frequency of interest. Uh, that's already there. So I just come in a bit tighter. And we've, we have already entered a velocity factor of 0.66 for this RG213. And I know it's 36 meters long. The spreadsheet comes up with an answer which tells us that the cable is one wavelength long at 5.50 megahertz. So going back to the cable attenuation program, we enter 5.5 up here, which we've already done. That results in a calculation which gives us a number called n. This number is 20, and following the instructions under step 3, if n is even, then we connect a short circuit at the far end of the cable. If it's odd, we leave it open circuit. This is an even number. The second thing the calculation has given us is a frequency called F1. This is 27.500 megahertz. When you measure cable attenuation, it's best to measure it at a frequency where there is no reactance. 27.5 megahertz happens to be a frequency where the, the, the cable is 20 quarter wavelengths long and thereby by putting a short circuit this is the short circuit we've added to the end of the cable as you can see using an adapter and one of my short circuit uh, adapters so now we turn on the receiver and we tune it to 27.5 megahertz there we go turn the gain up turn the bridge on the instructions are to set the reactant style to zero and the resistance style to zero. Here they are. Now we tune around that frequency looking for a null on the receiver. The reason for that is it may not be exactly 27500, it may be somewhere near that frequency, but we're not sure. So we'll tune the receiver around looking for a better null. high. That's too high. You see that watching I'm watching the S meter here. It's going down. And I think it's around there somewhere. Turn the gain down a little bit. Twenty seven six double three. So the next step is to adjust the R control for a null. But just looking at the reactance control, we must have pretty well close to the right frequency because we notice that it, if we adjust it slightly, we get a null at zero. So that looks pretty good. Now we adjust the R control for a null. quite hard to hear, so what I'll do, I'll swing over to the signal strength meter on the receiver. And you can watch that as we adjust it. And a little bit tighter. That's high resistance. Bottom lead is just flicking off. So because it's flicking off, I'll just turn the RF gain a little bit. And bring on a couple more legs. So I reckon the, the null is about there. So we'll now turn around down to our, our RX bridge and see what the resistance dial is. And the focus. And the major divisions are 10 ohms. So that's around about 6 ohms, I would say. 
turn the receiver off for now. So it looks like the dial is showing around about 6 ohms. However, because it's such a low value of resistance, one technique used is to remove the cable and plug in a small um, trim pot on a connector. This is a 100 ohm carbon trim pot. So I will now connect that to the, unplug the cable and connect that in its place. So now I've connected this small trim pot in the connector on the back, as you can see. What I will do now is I will adjust that trim pot for a null without touching the R dial. You've got to make sure you don't touch the R dial, because what we're actually trying to do here is find out what the actual R dial reading is. So we'll do that next. So now I'll, I'll start to adjust the trim pot for a null on the receiver. Still at the same frequency. We go up, down, and I'll watch the LEDs. And I reckon that's about the right spot. So I'll now unplug this uh, termination and I'll measure its resistance on a digital multimeter. So here is my meter. I'll now measure the resistance using my multimeter and just see what we get. Well, that shows 6.3. i just see what the probes are. I'll do it without the connector there. And it's around about 0.6 of an ohm for the probes. So we're looking at 5.7 ohms. So down here in the yellow box it says enter the value of RI. We enter 5.7. 5.7. And we know the cable's 50 ohms. And the calculation comes up with a loss of 0.991 dB. That's close enough to 1 dB. So if we have a look at our uh, characteristics for this particular type of cable, I've got a little chart here which came out of a magazine for a Belden cable and it's close enough to the type of cable I've got and if we have a look at the loss at uh, 30 megahertz which is close to 28 and we pan up to the red line, the red line is RG213 and we notice where it crosses the 30 meg mark close to 28 and we swing across to the loss and it's one decibel per hundred feet or 30.5 meters. Now remember the cable's 35 meters long so that's pretty good. So this this method works. You can of course uh, use other methods. I actually confirmed that by putting the cable on the end of a power meter and feeding a 28 meg signal at the other end and I, I measured around about a 1 dB drop.